Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping well and safe. This is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into this latest video. So a very interesting case of a patient who attended with bilateral blocked ears. This is the patient's right ear that we're commencing with. So in this ear, there's actually a lot more earwax. However, the patient felt that the hearing in the left ear was more affected. And you shall see why. The patient has got very, very narrow, twisty, bendy ear canals. So, uh, it's quite a difficult procedure for that reason. We're just stretching the ear wide open. And we then insert the endoscope into the ear to, to almost like a door stop, to keep the um, ear widened and stretched and straightened, which then allows us to insert the zonal suction probe. And the patient's got quite a few hairs here as well, a bit of dead keratin. Now, the patient suffers from bilateral eustachian tube dysfunction. They had some grommets fitted, uh, I think, beginning of the year. They only lasted for three or four months. The right grommet is embedded into the wax. You'll see it in a moment when I remove the plug of wax. I think it's in the next plug. The left grommet has already escaped from the ear canal. Um, so what are grommets? What is your station tube dysfunction? I'll quickly give an overview, but I want to explain the ear anatomy as well, the eardrum in a moment, because it's very fascinating. The eustachian tube is a narrow orifice that connects the middle ear, which is a cavity behind the eardrum, to the back of the nose and nasopharynx. The middle ear should be full of air and the air pressure behind the eardrum should be equal to the air pressure in the atmosphere. When the air pressure either side of the eardrum is equal, that's when your eardrum is most mobile. That's where you can hear the best. So it's the function of the eustachian tube. So there's the grommet, the blue grommet, the ventilation tube. So it's the function of the eustachian tube to equalise the air pressure behind the eardrum in the middle ear to that of the atmosphere. So this is the patient's right eardrum. You can see it's very bendy, narrow, twisty ear canal. And the patient has got a posterior retraction. The eardrum is wrapped around the long process of the incus. Um, so the eustachian tube equalises the air pressure. Typically, at resting state, the eustachian tube is actually shut. That prevents infection travelling up from the back of the nose to the middle ear. Also, it stops your own voice travelling up the eustachian tube. Uh, your heartbeat, so it's normally shut under resting conditions, so you don't hear your internal respiratory sounds and it prevents infection travelling up from the back, that may be in the back of your nose. And during brief moments of swallowing, yawning, chewing, the eustachian tube momentarily opens and it equalises the air pressure. If this eustachian tube is blocked at the back of the nose, it creates a vacuum and uh, your eardrum gets sucked inwards. Um, fluid that would normally drain from the middle ear through the eustachian tube also builds up and you can eventually develop glue ear. So a grommet is a ventilation tube, it's inserted by ENT surgeons into the eardrum because air can't enter the middle ear cavity via the back of the nose and the eustachian tube because it's blocked. Instead to equalise the air pressure, um, a little ventilation tube, a grommet as we call it in the UK, it's fitted into the eardrum and it allows air to enter the middle ear via the outer ear canal. Um, so that's what uh, eustachian tube dysfunction is, and that's what uh, the function of the grommet. So this is the patient's left ear now. The entrance is really, really narrow again, so I just have to widen this ear, get into there. So the wax came out a bit easier now. I've taken a screenshot of this. Um, you'll see it in a moment. I know there's a hair there. We're not going to try and take it. I saw uh, some comments from yesterday's video. It's not going to affect the patient. I'm not going to perforate the patient's eardrum going for a hair that's generally quite stuck on the drum. It's really hard to remove. Some dead skin posteriorly that I'm trying to remove here. I've got this out and it started to clarinet. Clarinetting is when it violently flaps and makes a really noisy, loud noise. We're just going to leave that. It's not a problem for the patient. Just going to mop up near the entrance. And you'll see in a moment, I've taken a screenshot of the patient's eardrum and the eardrum's really retracted now, superiorly at the top of the eardrum. We can actually see the neck of the, the malleus, the hammer bone which means the patient's got what we call an autoattic otomy. So the bone at the top of the eardrum, the superior bone, is slightly eroding, and that's because the eardrum is wrapped around it, and it can start eroding the bone. So we can see the neck of the malleus. We can also see the inc incustopedal joint, so with a long process of the, the, the incus uh, adjoins to the stapes bone. We can also possibly see there, uh, we can see the caudal tympani as well, which is the nerve that runs to your tongue, and it goes from the back of the, the, the eardrum. And 
also possibly we can also see the posterior cruise of the stapes. So the stapes is the the the, um, the stirrup bone, the smallest bone in the body, and you get the head of the stapes and then the neck, and you get an anterior cruise and a uh, posterior cruise. Possibly on the lower end side where the stapes bone is, we can see the bone to the right. So that could be uh, posterior cruise, but it may not be. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys, um, and you're all keeping well and safe. Take care. Speak soon. Bye.